So what is the best starter amateur radio 2 meter and 70 centimeter handheld uh, with simple displays? Here's uh, what we're going to limit ourselves to. So it has to be 2 meter 70 centimeter dual band amateur radio. Analog, no digital radios. A simple display needs to be rugged and priced between $80 and $160. So what's not on this list? Well, obviously the UV5R is not on this list. It is way below $80. So the Bofang UV82HP is about $60. Uh, if you get this from BTEC out of America, you know it's going to be a good radio. Uh, but still, it falls out of the price range. The Yaesu FT4X. Well, the 4X is basically the same thing as, or similar enough, to the FT65. But the FT65 has a much better display, and it has four programmable buttons uh, the only and they cost the same so the value of the FT4X is it is a bit shorter if that's something you want then go ahead and get it I've got three of the four that I would suggest I don't have the Elenco. So what we have is an FT60, and if you're in the US, there'll be an R after that. The FT65R in the US is this one. The Elenco DJ-VX50. Uh, there'll be a letter after it, depends on your country. And then the Ocean KG UV7D which we have here. Ease of front panel and use of memory programming. Okay, so when I say front panel, it's the button structure and how the menu is set up. The easiest one is going to be the Elenco. The next easiest one, just because of how good the display and the menu system is, uh, is this one. Yeah, these both are kind of about as complicated. Uh, the FT60 is more complicated because it does so much, so many more things. Airband listening. Okay, the only two that can listen to airplane and tower broadcasts, and which would be the AM frequencies, is the FT60 and the Elenco can do it. Now, FM broadcast system. You want to listen to your local radio. The only one that doesn't do it is the FT60. All right, one button, no weather. Other radios, you would have to program those weather frequencies in here. So it's a nice feature to have. The only one that doesn't have that is the ocean. All right, does it have a flashlight? That's important to some people. The FT60 has a flashlight. It's this LED right here. It's not really good. All it's going to do is probably keep you from tripping. Uh, it's not a very focused light. The Ocean, you would think the way it sticks up, it's not very focused, but it's a whole lot more focused than this one. Transmit power. Okay. They all do 5 watts. The Ocean will do 7 watts on 2 meters. And you can buy the Ocean to be 2 meter, 70 centimeter, uh, and 2 meter, and uh, 1.25 meters, or 2 meter and 6 meter. They've got three different versions of that. They also have a commercial version. So dual display dual receive okay so the FT60 has a single line display and single receive 
Now it will do dual watch, which means like every five seconds, it'll go look at another frequency or memory and see if there's anything on it. And then it'll come back to what you're using. Uh, the FT65, I say dual display, dual receive and VFO only. There is a trick you can do this with this. Watch my other videos. So, uh, and then the Elenco also has dual display, dual receive. Switch to single receive. Sometimes this is important. Uh, essentially for the, the Yezus, that doesn't matter. They're single receive. Uh, but the Elenco and the Ocean you can turn it so to just receive one one channel or one VFO. Okay, the antenna. This can be important, especially if you have other radios. So, except for the FT65, all of them are SMA male. The For some reason, the FT65 uses the same connect, antenna connection that the Bofeng products do. The UV five Rs. So what's what's the difference? That is your SMA female. This is your SMA male. So if you have the bow thing, want to upgrade, you want to keep using your antennas that you had, this would be the radio to get. Speaker mic connection uh, is a single uh, tip ring ring sleeve thing. It just fits right in there. This one is completely different. It's a dual pin, but it's not the Kenwood. It's very much very specific. And because of that, this comes with a uh, earpiece. So the microphone push button and a earphone to put in your ear. And then this uses the Kenwood style. And the Alinko uses its own kind. And for some reason, Alinko always says, you'll void out your warranty if you use someone else's. Okay, so battery charging. So the FT60, has a cradle that you can set the battery into or on the older models you can put uh, 12 volts right into here and it'll run the radio but on the older models it will also charge the battery in fact that was the only way you could charge the battery on the older models the newer models don't charge the battery through here all the others use a cradle to hold the battery and you can charge the radios, the batteries, without the radio attached. Memory banks. Okay, so only this has memory banks. What memory banks are good for is this can program a thousand frequencies, a thousand memories. Let's say you travel a lot. You go from, you travel and maybe you go through five different areas that are have a lot of ham repeaters. You don't want to uh, scan through all the repeaters because you'll get the staticky ones from farther away. So you can set up up to 10 bands with frequencies in it. You can just have a, a band for the town you live in, the town for the next town, and so forth. That's very helpful. If you look at the literature for this, it says it has bands kind of, but those are actually used to be able to listen to the FM radio. It's like the preset buttons you have in your car. Uh, they call them team, but you also might see it as advertised as, not bands, banks, sorry. I've been using the wrong term, banks. Uh, top knobs, okay. So on the top knobs, and the more knobs you have on top, the more professional and easier it is to use the radio. This one's the king, FT60. We have the on-off and power. Top one is selector. 
and this one is squelch and because of how nice this receiver is you need this on there okay this this one all it has is the on off and volume so to change channels you have to do the up and down or you can type it in either channel number or uh, if you're in VFO mode like any of these you just type in the frequency that gets a little hard so you noticed I did a trick earlier where I press and hold the scan and then I scan it close to where in the 200 menus it is and then I stop the scan and press so I don't have to press this hundreds of times okay so the Alenco and the Ocean both have on off with volume and a selector so you'll select through memories or you'll select up and down through the VFO the Mars cap so making it extended transmit the this one you have to go in and like cut a diode and when you do that if you do it right it will clear out your memories that you had in there but the radio will still work if you do it wrong it'll wipe out those memories and your radio will stop working so very iffy to do by yourself this one here is nice because it's there's like a cheat code that you put in uh, the Alenco you I saw somebody on the internet do some tricks with some software that like makes the radio think it's now a commercial radio what you need to do is you need to buy the part 90 radio uh, uh, better safe radio sells the commercial version so all the frequencies are unlocked through the entire band the water and dust proofing FT60 is not rated at all uh, this is IP54 rated so it'll be okay in the rain but don't drench it the Alenco is submersible and whenever they say submersible make sure that if you have a something plugged in here it's still submersible or not you just need to know that and then this one is also IP54 rated sorry this is going on so long but I'm reviewing four radios FT60 good option for setting up a field HT base station because of the direct power input works well as a car mobile for the same reason and it has wide range receive very wider than anything else we're reviewing the FT65 it's a basic and simple radio and it has a very comfortable feel and size and I really do like the way they did this push to talk key some people don't like it because they're used to other things this push to talk key is sometimes hard to know if you're actually pushing it okay the Alenco I think it's the best handheld for newly licensed ham this is an excellent Elmer's radio to hand out to, at any ham event uh, so it's straightforward it's like pure amateur radio talk on the radio how the menus and the keys work and how you set repeaters into it uh, it's more simple than any of the other radios to learn let alone use in the field when you're under stress okay the UV 70 uh, comes as a part 90 we talked about that a 2 meter 70 centimeter 2 meter 1.25 meter and a 2 meter and 6 meter the menu system is similar to the Baofeng menu, but it's easier to use. Okay, so I don't have this one. I wish I did. I wish this was around when all that you could really get inexpensively was this radio. A few years later, the UV5R started appearing. I'm glad I got this before I got the UV5R.
So for ham starting out, I would suggest the Alinko. It's running, I think, around $90 right now. So it is a good value. 